tutti, sono Rossella Welzel di Cenfor, siamo i eh, distributori in Italia di eh, Breppols. Ehm, ringrazio il collega di Breppols, Rudolf Pulink, che ehm, effettuerà la presentazione in inglese naturalmente e eh, lui è molto più tecnico di me, io però assisterò in modo da eh, aiutarvi nel caso ci fossero eh, parti non chiare. Uh, ok, Rudolf. Thank you and uh, your, your turn. Scusate, dico a tutti la stessa cosa di sempre, chiudete tutti i vostri microfoni in modo tale da non, da non disturbare la presentazione del, del collega. Per disattivare okay. l'audio c'è un'icona con un microfono al centro del vostro schermo, quindi spostando il mouse dovreste vedere. Ok. Thank you, Rosella, for introducing me, and thank you, Massimo and Rosella, for organizing this uh, presentation. So I'm happy to be with you. I would prefer we to be... Start, we can start? Yes? Okay. So I was saying that uh, I was thanking you for organizing this presentation, you and Massimo, and that I would prefer to be in Palermo to give the presentation, but... Due to the circumstances, I will give a uh, team presentation. And so the focus of this presentation, so the focus of this presentation will be the library of Latin text, say it's A and B. And you can see here on the screen oops, uh, the plan of the presentation. So I will first begin with the description of the library of Latin text with description of the content and coverage of uh, this database and afterwards I will describe the main functionalities. Uh, at the end of the presentation I will uh, introduce you to the Clavis Clavium which is a new uh, open access project so that is freely available and after the presentation that will last uh, about 30 minutes we will have a Q&A session. Uh, so the library of Latin text is our oldest database. It is a project that started in the 70s. And uh, concrete, uh, we published our first CD-ROM in 1991. So we were then one of the first publishers to launch uh, online databases, uh, databases on CD-ROM. And um, the name of the database was then the CTDoc Library of Christian Latin Text. CTDoc was the name of the academic center at the University of Louvain-la-Neuve. And Christian is a reference to the Christian text, which is not, uh, which we abandoned because the database uh, expands to other uh, chronological areas. So the aim of this uh, database is to cover all the Latin literature from its beginning in antiquity up to uh, the 20th century, because one of the last texts of the database is a, the one of the Second Vatican Council. At the moment, we have uh, 83 million words, and the database grows yearly with 1.5 million words. And it is organized with two updates per year. And by update, I mean a new text, new edition, and also, if necessary, uh, corrigenda, so corrections uh, in the database. Uh, we try as much as possible to get the best available editions. So for antiquity, we use the collection of uh, the Teubner collection. For uh, patristic, and Middle Ages, we use mainly the text from Corpus Christianorum, but also text from other series like uh, the Corpus of Vienna. And we are expanding now the modern period. So the result is that at, uh, right now we have uh, more than 4,000 4, texts from uh, 13, um, from 1,060 authors. Uh, we have the library of Latin text series A, and we have also the uh, series B, which was launched a few years ago with the aim of growing faster. So as I told you, in the series A, 
the aim was to add 1.5 million words per year. Here in the CSB, the aim was to uh, grow annually with uh, 2.5 million words, so almost a double. Uh, another reason, reason for creating this Series B was that for uh, copyright reasons, there were texts that we couldn't add to the Library of Latin Text Series A, but well in the Series B. However, uh, I can already announce that uh, probably next year we will uh, abandon the series A and B and customers will be only offered the library of Latin text. So the series A and B will merge together. Uh, so at the moment in the series B, there are more than uh, um, 1100 texts and more than 5008. Uh, hundreds of diplomatic documents, and you have here an overview of what you so, can find. Sorry, yes, uh, a, a unique uh, database for 20, 2021 for the yes. next. Uh, okay, Pro probably. So it has to be confirmed. Okay. But we we decided to to abandon the CS A and B because it was okay. too much complicated and uh, it will probably be available next year. OK, clear. Thank you. And so here you have just an overview of what can be found in the CSB. So you have the corpus of Grammatici Latini. You have also texts from Italian and Northern uh, Renaissance, uh, the Utopia of Thomas More. To, uh, you have also correspondence of uh, Erasmus and Adash from Erasmus. So it is also a, a, um, a wide coverage of the Latin literature. In order to access the database, you have to go to the brepolis.net uh, website and to click on one of these icons, or you can also make use of the CDS. Uh, the CDS is a cross database search tool. It is uh, a search interface that allows you to search through the series A and B together. And now, if we go to the library of Latin text series A, you have the search screen. You can see above that it is possible to select the language of the interface, and you have also an Italian uh, interface. In the section about, you will have information about the last update. So you will have, you will find a text describing uh, the content of the last uh, update, and you will also find the list of titles included in the last update. So in new, in new titles. All titles is for all the texts in the database. And more information is a link to the to a website dedicated to Brepolis databases. So you will find more information like uh, leaflets, PowerPoint, presentation, and so on. And I also always highly encourage users to, to go to the manual, which is a PDF. It is a, about uh, 40 pages, but for uh, scholars, it is worth to, to browse through this uh, manual, just to have an idea of all the search possibilities uh, offered by the database. Four different ways to access information. So you have a quick search with uh, a limited number of search fields. You have an advanced search where you can make use of filters. You have the table of contents, so if you wish to access a specific reference, and you have the distribution of word forms, which is a kind of uh, concor concordance. So I will start with the table of content, and this will be used to access the work of a specific authors. So all the authors are organized uh, by alphabetic order, Let's say that we wish to, to access to all the authors of the database beginning with J. So we have here all these authors and I've selected Guilhem, Wilhelm of Ockham. And you see directly that we make a distinction between uh, 
the works which attribution is certain, uh, doubtful attribution, so dubium and pseudo uh, Guidelmus de Ockham. If we select author, we have the list of work of this author. And let's say that we wish to access the, tra the Tractatus de Corpore Christi. We click on the work and you have the work which is organized by sentences. So each work is divided in sentences. Uh, you have here and also on the previous screen, you had an icon with uh, IR which is uh, Index Religiosus, which is a bibliographical database of Brepols. So let's say that uh, you have also access to this bibliography. You have uh, access to the bibliographical information about uh, Guilhermus de Ockham. You have here an open book, which is a memento. And in this memento, you will find uh, background information on the text. So you will have also the date uh, of the author, uh, the, date, the date of the work, which edition was used in the database, statistical information, and also uh, some notes about uh, the text of the database. So it was the first way to access the database. It was a table of contents. Then you have the distribution of word forms. It is uh, really a concordance, so you can make use of filters. I've not uh, done it. I've just so here. I just typed a word in the field word form, so astronomia. And if we click on, you will have here. Uh, so we have 154 occurrences of astronomia. Then you have the occurrences per uh, period. So we have two for antiquity, one for the first part of the patristic area, uh, no results in the pseudepigraph of the uh, Old Testament, no result in the Vulgate, uh, 29 results in the second uh, part of the patristic era, no result in the Council Ecumenic. So I see that there is someone coming. Uh, you have then the result for medieval uh, periods and the recentior latinitas is for the modern uh, era and afterwards. Now for the patristic, so here I've selected the patristic. So we had 29 results. Now the results are displayed by authors. I've selected uh, Isidorus Hispalensis. Then we have 11 results uh, spread over two works. And in the first work, oops, we have uh, really what is an, uh, a concordance. We have the occurrences of the word astronomia. I've started with a distribution of word forms with a table of content. And these two ways of accessing uh, information, accessing text is not the most uh, commonly used. The most commonly used uh, search mode is a quick search. In the quick search, you can uh, conduct a search on the world database, but you can also make use of a filter uh, by author or by work. And here for uh, this presentation, I have decided to uh, select uh, Cicero. And you see here in the search field, if you type the first letter of Cicero, so CI, you have a list of authors beginning with CI. So I've selected Cicero. Uh, here it is possible to select for work. So if you go to the search, uh, to the field work, you will have only the works of Cicero in the database. And I've just type the word Cecilia in the work of Cicero. And now if we click on search, we will have all the results uh, in the work of Cicero, which is 200, 200 and 100 sentences. 
Uh, the results are displayed by uh, works of Cicero. And you have also per century, but of course it is one author, so it is the first uh, century BC. Now, if we go to the first uh, work of Cicero in Severem Orationes Sex, you will have in this work all the occurrences of Sicilia, which are displayed in the units by per unit of sentence. So you have also here the possibility to export your results. You can export uh, each sentence with a context of one extra sentence before and one uh, after. You have here the possibility to uh, to go to the full text. To display it also here, uh, just really to have access to the full text. You have linked to bibliographies like l'année philologique, where you will retrieve bibliographical records about uh, Cicero. And you have also here uh, Memento, but uh, which was uh, the background information on the text, where you will see, for instance, that this work, uh, this text is uh, the Typner edition, for instance. So in our search, we have searched for the exact word Sicilia. Of course, in Latin, word, words uh, are declined. So if we are going to use the uh, uh, include similar, and here the database will search for all the lemmatized uh, word forms that are linked to Sicilia. So the, the decline form, but also for the spelling uh, variants. Spelling variants here are not important because Sicilia, I guess that there are not so many ways to, to write Sicilia. But for a, a word like uh, philosophia, it can be it could be written with F or with PH for the the sound F or with uh, a Y for the the sound I. So it is very interesting to have this uh, similar similar search. And I click on search, and we have here the results. We have. 342 uh, occurrences and you see here in comparison with our uh, former research that we uh, we have generated more uh, uh, results with this similarity search. Now if we open the first uh, work we'll see that we will retrieve a word form like uh, Siciliae, Siciliam and so on. Now, I have here, uh, it is another example, so you can, as soon as you open the database, you can go directly to the full text uh, field and write a word. So I've written the word maternitas for maternity in English. I've including similar for the decline form. And now if we click on search, we will have here uh, the results that are displayed per centuries. And you see directly the history of the word. You see that the word uh, maternitas is not attested before the ninth century. And you have per century the number of occurrences and also per authors uh, the number of occurrences. So you see directly the history of uh, the use of a specific word. Let's say that you are uh, a scholar of someone interested in the 13th century. If we open the 13th centuries, we will have uh, the different uh, 13th centuries authors. So I've selected here Raymondus Lulus. In Raymondus Lulus, we have, of course, uh, different uh, occurrences per work. And I've selected the Arbor Scienciae, so the tree of sciences. And we, were, we have all the occurrences of the word maternitas in this work of uh, Raymondus Lulus. Um, so here, 
it was the quick search. Now we have the last way to use a database, which is advanced search. Um, in the advanced search, you can I make use. In the advanced search, we can make use of filters. In other words, instead of uh, searching through the whole database, you can limit your search to one period, for instance, antiquity, or to one authors, or to uh, one title, or to several titles. Or on the contrary, you can not exclude from your search uh, a specific period. Let's say that you are only interested in uh, Christian literature, you can exclude uh, antiquity and uh, modern recentior latinitas for the modern era. So these are filters that you can use. And then you have uh, the full text uh, search field. And I would like here to emphasize what is possible to do with uh, this search tool. And this is not possible in any other database. You can really uh, build a very complex queries like this one. And in this query, we are searching for the occurrences of the words aqua and calida with uh, maximum two words between them, of aqua and frigida with uh, two words between them, at the exclusion of Medici. And now if we click on search, so it is also important here, so I forgot to mention it. You have here the syntax button, which gives you an overview of uh, the operators and jokers that are possible to use in the search fields. Like here, I've used uh, different uh, operators and jokers. So you, you will have here on syntax, if you click on this link, an overview of what is possible to, uh, to use to build your search query. Now, if we click on search, we have, uh, like in the quick search, we have the list of results uh, displayed per sentence. So this is the end of the presentation about the library of Latin text. Um, so I would like to focus on first that uh, this is a database that is a lively database. So it is updated twice a year with new material. It is also a database covering all the Latin literature. So from antiquity up to the modern era. And that uh, there are four different ways to uh, search through this uh, database. And shortly it will be possible to search uh, the library and the series library of Latin text series A and B together. Um, I will say something about an open access project, but maybe you have questions now or? Yes, I, I would like to see, uh, to, to know um, if you want to uh, download all uh, a text, you uh, have to uh, do this sentence by sentence when you uh, want to see uh, a Cicero work, for example. Uh, it is possible to export uh, by, I think, by three sentences. So you have the main sentence and one uh -huh. sen sentence before and one after. Ah, uh, okay. So the main reason is to protect the database because okay. we already had cases where we had people trying to, uh, so to download the full database and afterwards it is available somewhere on the internet. And so you have to be conscious that it is something that uh, was built over the time, so since uh, the 70s, and that we have an academic center, which is called here the Center Traditio Literarum Occidentalium, uh, under the supervision of Professor Tombo, which work on the text. So we have a team of Latinists uh, mm -hmm. working on this text. Okay. Uh, so this is the main reason why it is the export is limited to a small context, unfortunately. OK, 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 thank you. Um, so I will continue with 
the Clavis Clavium, which is our open access project. And afterward, I suggest that we we have uh, the Q&A session if it is okay for you. So this is uh, Clavis Clavium. It is a new project that was launched uh, at the end of last year. And Clavis Clavium in Latin means key of keys. And a clavium is something very useful for people uh, studying patristic literature. As you can find in this uh, clav clavis information about text, uh, text edition, which manuscripts contained a text, a bibliographical information, and up to now, uh, Brepos had in the Corpus Christianorum uh, series six uh, claves, which are here the Clavis Patrum Latinorum, the Bibliotheca Agiographica Latina, the Clavis Patrum Graecorum, the Bibliotheca Agiographica Graeca, the Clavis Apocryphorum Veteris Testamenti, and the Clavis uh, Apocryphorum Novi Testamenti. And all these printed claves, claves uh, have been made available online as an open access project. And it is also a collaborative project where scholars can contribute with their own uh, information. So it is also a, a lively project and it is uh, open access. So, oops. In order to to get access to this database, you have here the URL. I will send it to you after the presentation. And if you go to the Clavis Clavium uh, platform, you see that you have two different links. You have first the link to uh, consult the database, and you have also the contributor link where the people uh, who work on the project can add their information. So we will see the consultation. You can search by authors or by titles. And here I have uh, selected as uh, example Augustinus. And I've selected the work Regulae Monasticae Benedicto Anianensi Anticliores. And you will see the kind of information you, you can retrieve in the Clavis Clavium. So you have a uh, link to encyclopedias, uh, bibliographies, uh, which edition uh, are available for this specific text. You have also here, I took for the Confessiones, uh, which series it is uh, available, uh, so the editions. So you have different um, information, which is which, which is very useful for uh, patristic scholars. So I'm not very familiar with uh, patristic studies, so uh, I cannot uh, say very much. I can explain in details all the information, but it is very it is uh, the central uh, search point if if you start working on uh, a church father work. So you will start with uh, Clavis Clavium. The emendaciones, font tests, so for the sources, and so on. Uh, I will end this presentation by uh, so by um, describing a website which is about .brepolis.net which is a website uh, gathering together information about our databases. You will find there uh, news about the next updates, like the forthcoming updates of the Library of Latin Text will be announced here. The next webinars will be also announced here, and you will find information per database, uh, like leaflets in, in uh, PDF or uh, PowerPoint presentation and so on. I thank you for your time and for your attention. And now if you have any question, I will be happy to answer you. 
Thank you, thank Rudolf. You. Thank you, Rosela. Thank you, Massimo. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank I have you very much. I have just a question, uh, Rudolf. Is it right uh, that uh, um, Latin um, uh, text database is linked to the um, database of Latin dictionaries, right? There are cross references. Yes, cross you have, when you display results, so I will come back here to, in the presentation. Oops. Uh, so you have cross links from dictionaries to the texts and back. Yes, when you are in the text, but I cannot. Uh, you have. Uh, so here. When you are in the list of results, you have here uh, a link which is offered to the DLD, which is a database of Latin dictionaries. OK. And so for those of you who don't know the database of Latin dictionaries, it is uh, a database containing uh, 23 Latin dictionaries and you find we will find defining and translating dictionaries uh, like the Forcellini, the Gaffio, uh, the Blaise Patristic. You will find a bunch of uh, lexicographical tools which allows you to uh, to study the Latin vocabulary. Interesting. E io volevo sottolineare una cosa, lo dico in italiano a beneficio soprattutto dei miei colleghi quando fanno eh, il servizio di reference, che è importante il, eh, il link che c'è per ogni parola, eh, per ogni opera che uno può cercare su, sia sulla serie A che sulla serie B, alla Nefilologique, altra banca dati che noi compriamo. Quindi tutti gli antichisti, i linguisti che cercano su eh, Library of Latin Text, automaticamente per ogni eh, parola opera hanno il riferimento alla Nefilologique eh, aggiornata continuamente, visto che appunto eh, noi compriamo pure questa, eh, questo database, questa risorsa. Ok, Rudolf, Ma Massimo was uh, saying ah. that also la nefilologica is linked to this database, which is an interesting feature. Yes, I will give uh, probably within, not next week, but the week afterwards, I will give a, a, a webinar about la nefilologica. And of course, you will see that from each bibliographical record of la nefilologica, for those about Latin authors, you will be offered a link to the library of Latin text. For, uh, let's say, Greek authors, you will have a link offered to the Thesaurus Linguae Graecae, which is not from Repos, but you have different kind of links uh, for uh, authors of antiquity. You have also links to Perseus database, which is uh, freely access accessible. And it is something specific for Brepos is that we try to, to build links between our databases. Uh, for instance, between our encyclopedias and uh, our bibliographies, we have built links. Um, now we have launched also this year the Dictionnaire des Philosophes Antiques. And in the Dictionnaire des Philosophes Antiques, you will also find links from each uh, biography and each entries of this dictionnaire, so for each philosopher, to the to la nefilologique. Um, Perfetto, se, se non ci sono domande da parte di, dei colleghi o di, degli altri partecipanti, noi forse possiamo salutare il collega Puelink e ringraziarlo per aver accettato il nostro invito e, e confidiamo appunto nella registrazione di questa sessione per metterla a disposizione nel, nel nostro, nei nostri siti istituzionali. Ok, grazie a tutti voi. Grazie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rudolf. Have a nice day. You too. Arrivederci a tutti. Bye. 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 Bye.
Bye bye. Bye.